What you reading, man? Something happened? Yeah, it's breaking news coming in. I don't know. I got the paper delivered this morning, and um, there's a bunch of articles in here. It's a crazy, it huh. seems like a, a thicker edition than normal, um, but there are weird articles in here. Uh, Wade calls killings over trial. A da- uh, Wade called killings a dastardly act. Uh, I mean, there's also stuff about Uber that, 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 priest who was called and dude there's so many different great artists suspected killer defected to russia in 1959 um oswald articles written so fast that um they had to get the paper out so this was the headline tomorrow 60 years ago um in the oh, actually, t- news. wait no it's thursday I, I think it's the day after tomorrow right Oh, no, this is Saturday, November twenty eighth. So they they took they, no the twenty eighth. They took a couple of days. This came out on oh, okay. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Very they took cool. A couple of days. Well, you went all the way to Dallas to get a paper. Well, they didn't deliver. I, I you know, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I went to a newsstand. Uh, Johnson becomes president, receives oath on an aircraft, some strange aircraft. He received the oath. All right. All right, so we are back. I just was I just was looking at you yesterday. I die. <laughs> Dude, it's so surreal. I, I mean, the whole thing, like, you know, one moment I'm in Allen, Texas, in a library with some uh, 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 an MC introducing me to people coming in in walkers who know more about the assassination <laughs> than I did, who were actually there. They're from Dallas, uh, asking me questions about it. I mean, uh, they're the ones who... There was a guy there in Allen, Texas, who came uh, at the very end. Uh, Tom, uh, uh, the host, introduced me to the, this gentleman who must be about 95 years old. And he was in the Catholic Church when Uber, the priest, was called by Jackie uh, to come to Parkland to administer the last rites. Mm. And he was telling me the details of that, working with Uber as a, a, a church worker and a member of the church in, uh, uh, in Dallas, the Catholic Church. Very interesting. Well, well, hey, you know what? In fairness, on the other end of things, at the uh, Lancer conference, we do have some young ones. I mean, there is what? There's a kid there who's 14 years old. Yeah. And this guy is the future of all this research, literally. Yeah, that kid was young. I, I didn't know he was 14. I thought he was older, but he, he I thought he was like 18, but still unbelievable. Yeah, 14 years old. And he's, he's getting footage that nobody's ever seen before. And it's like, how the hell is this kid doing that? And it looks yeah. like he uh, has full access to uh, Robert Groden's stuff. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Gro- I got to meet Groden at the dinner. Uh, that was great. I mean, it, it was kind of, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to go through all that. And um, I, I mean, the reception by the America's Untold Story audience was oh, yeah. uh, overwhelmingly insane. Uh, I, the people who didn't know who the hell we were, which is <laughs> which was only a few at the beginning, because I, I, I when I first came in, there was a guy there in at his merch table selling a book or something, a couple of books, and he was kind of like really smug and harsh. And I was being super polite. I'm just going, "What's this book? What's this book?" And he had like some old newspapers, and he's just going, "Ah, I'm just clearing out the garage. What difference does it make? I'm trying to make a buck over here." And then <laughs> it, it kind of, somebody must have told him who I was. And all of a sudden, the guy's entire tone changed, and and he was going, "Please come over, look at my merch. Come on, I, here, take this book, please." I mean, I, I left with a suitcase full of books. I had to check another flight. That's how many books I got, weighing eight hundred pounds. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's crazy, and and I don't remember the name, but the dude gave us those newspapers, which is amazing. Oh, that guy! Holy guy! I mean, that guy was so humble. I mean, wow, what a mellow dude. I mean, just to present the, that newspaper and one to Eric uh, mm-hmm. in a plastic seal, um, that was amazing. Oh, there yeah. Was, there was other stuff, too, that I haven't even had a chance. I just got back very late last night, uh, so I don't have any pants on now. But the point of the matter is we the show must go on. 
and that's what we'll do. Here we today. are. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we'll do today with a Q and A, and then I think a special uh, edition, JFK edition, Freeform Friday on Friday, uh, mm -hmm. where we will focus on uh, what's probably going to be a lot of news tomorrow uh, around the world with the 60th anniversary uh, of the assassination. Oh, yeah. And I mean, everything is coming out now. You have like the Parkland doctors who I guess they've managed to come up with a couple of them still alive or whatever. Who've released a hey, be better late than never. Oh, yeah. I and mean, it's like, what? Oh, imagine that throat shot in the front. Yeah. So, one of the doctors, he was going to do a press conference and his wife said, you need that like you need a hole in the head. <laughs> See how this works, only I tell the jokes you laugh. There you go. Now, so what, get, we have a. We have a sponsor commercial today, or uh, we it? actually do have a sponsor today. I'm That's thrilled. Um, he's back. Moon does Moon not does. does not does. does as in not bucks or not Starbucks. This is the coffee. That's not burnt. It tastes good. Uh, my personal favorite. I have uh, right here, what? which, which is the uh, adrenaline injection which I definitely need when I'm uh, coming in late from Dallas myself. <laughs> and we have, they have merch now. And look at that matching cup, dude. Oh, I didn't know Adrenaline that. Adrenaline injection. Well, I like that Southern Pecan, whatever that was called. That was the best one so far. Yeah, it's uh, excellent. And yeah. uh, I got to take some credit. He okay. does have subscriptions going now. So apparently the way it works is when you order some coffee on the second round and to you know take care of our people, they get a 15% discount on their second order and when they okay. do the uh, subscription. So all they have to do is go to the site, find what coffee they want. Subscriptions are now available, which is awesome. And he wanted me to also point out, which is very cool, they have two new organic coffees in there. What? Yep. Uh, let me see. I just saw it a second ago. I believe it's Nicaragua and Honduras. So, you know, we've got the Central American thing going on. They need to come up with an Argentina. Here we go. Uh, organic Honduras and orga organic Nicaragua. And they need to have like a libertarian Argentina blend too. Oh, the Argentina guy. What about that election? Oh yeah, yeah. I I mean, mean, he probably gets his coffee from Argentina, or maybe Guatemala, Honduras. Who knows? I mean, uh, maybe I I don't, I don't know, know how far south it goes. Maybe it's yeah. too cold down there. I'm not really sure. It just it's well, everything south of us. <laughs> I don't even. Know. I mean, you've got a a Trump type guy now, and so please. You got a good guy down there, so please don't cry for me, Argentina. Definitely don't, but please do. Seriously, check out Mundo's. Uh, there's a link in the description here. There's a link in the description of people on other platforms, etc. I'm not going to name them because that. What, that what do you mean? Are, uh, competitors or something? Or uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a matter of. YouTube doesn't like other things, but you know who they are, and oh you're probably my. watching them now. So if you look oh. at your description, oh or my. if you look at a comment below, let's say oh. if you're on a platform called X, you might see, oh, oh, I see. Right, right, right. Um, right. that there's a sponsor note there, and there's a link to the site. So definitely check it out. Um, first question of the day. Why do I do the illuminate triangle hand sign? I don't know what that Tell me, is. Why do you do it? Why don't you just come out and say you are Illuminati? Oh, it's Illuminati. I, okay. Yes. I I, Jesus, uh, I, I I, I've even... been saying this to you off camera for, for two years. You won't come out of the closet <sighs> I don't as know. an Illuminati member. Only <laughs> family goes back, obviously, 500 years to the you know Knights of Templar. All right. And David Parson does not appreciate how you are saying your coffee. He's saying that uh, pecan is a nut and a pecan is a portable urinal. What do they say about pecans? <laughs> well, you <laughs> like the pecan flavor of coffee. The southern pecan? What did I say? Right. It, David's giving busting your balls. It's two no, no, different no. ways to say it, man. Right. What um, is that? What pecan is or pecan. It's Dude, a, I, it's I, I sound gay saying pecan. That sounds gay, bro. I, I, pecan. <laughs> this is that, I'm nauseous even saying it. Pe it's a pecan. What are you kidding me? Pecan. <laughs> the hell says pecan. You sound like a schmuck. Well, he does. 
Okay, well, that's his problem. Pecan, maybe in his circle, it's okay. All right, well, Jim. If I ever said pecan, the people I hang out with, I would be ridiculed for the rest of my life. Well, and you can go to Moon Dose Coffee and get some Southern Bell pecan coffee. It's a great flavor. It really is my favorite flavor, to be honest. It's great coffee. Yeah, oh, here it is. Southern Bell butter. Pecan. Oh yeah, there was butter involved. Yeah, yeah that, I love that butter, butter pecan. Butter yeah, pecan. Yeah, talking about uh, burying the lead. Sorry, yeah. butter is important. Southern Bell butter pecan. Yeah, that's it. So there you go, and it's it, that we said pecan multiple times for you, so we can shift right back to pecan. All right, butter. enough with the pecan. The Southern Bell butter is the most important thing there. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, so Q and A for today, and. Dude, are, you just did the Illuminati triangle again. I, the guy's is that, right. Is, is the guy's that a thing? Right. Is that really? Of course, thing? it's a thing. Are you crazy? Of course, dude. It's just it's called steepling. Well, uh, they they said it about this too, Hunley, and you kept oh, doing. Oh yeah, okay. You there, kept doing go. this all through the last campaign. So, well, what are you talking about, Mark? I don't yeah. know what you're saying. <laughs> oh my God. All right, well, let's, let's get, get to the questions. Well, let's get to All the right, rapid fire to... lightning round. A lot of people have a lot of questions. We're here to I try. Have to... We don't have all the answers, but we'll try to answer some of the questions. Well, and you definitely uh, have more than I do. All right, so we'll just start off with Amanda at random, and I will try to get to whatever I can here and there. Um, obviously, you can't get to all of them. Question, what are the exact make and models of rifles found other than the Carcano? I've heard two different rifle models men mentioned in the on the roof of the book depository and would like some clarification. Uh, well, there's the German Mauser that was found. I don't know the actual uh, make and model of the German Mauser, but it was Stamp Mauser uh, found by Seymour Weitzman uh, on the sixth floor. And there was also what I say is a 303 British Enfield found on the roof. Uh, there was also the 303 British Enfield owned by uh, Wesley Buell Frazier, apparently taken from his house. So that's a third rifle. Um, but yeah, I, and then there was the rifles that were owned by um, a guy who worked in the, I think it was Castor, who worked in the school book depository uh, a separate business. There were different businesses in the building, by the way, in case people uh, don't realize there's other businesses in that building. And one guy had a bunch of rifles. He had brought them in the day before and was showing them to friends. Hunting rifles knew that he bought. <laughs> there was so many rifles in the building that it's hard to answer that question. Yeah, um, there is the, the Carcano, which is uh, the framing rifle, the one that they frame him with. But they also began with the Mauser, and then the other framing rifle was on the roof, the uh, 303 British Enfield. Okay. Or and the British so, Enfield 303, whichever way you want to call it. Somebody wrote in, I don't know, it was Twitter or you know, local. Some, somebody said that they they also saw the footage of them lowering the rifle yes, from I'm, the top. I, thank and, you. And, Finally, and, somebody. Go and, on. And, and they said that they think that was the inf it was an infield that was being lowered from the yes ground. yes I, I've been saying this for years they've scrubbed that footage from the internet it's been scrubbed just like the uh, tape of Jay Hoover talking to uh, uh, LBJ the day after the assassination about the imposter Oswald in Mexico City and the phony photos of Mexico City things do get scrubbed folks I know this is hard to believe that you can't find something on YouTube in 2023 in your underwear at home in Des Moines. Uh, but other people have seen things that they didn't record for you 50 years later, thinking it would be scrubbed. So I, I watched that footage and many other Americans and many other people who were in the JFK research community remember that rifle being brought down by the roof. There's also um, when they come down from the roof, there's also a circle of detectives and cops talking about it on the street that is available, and there is a photo of that. Okay. And, uh, oh, I forgot to mention earlier, but thank you, Tony Scott, for remembering the pattern. Please say question ahead of time so I know it's actually a question and not just a chat comment. But um, question, do you have any idea how we can go about having Dealey Plaza put on the National oh. Register of historic places so they can't destroy it. Thank you. Actually, there uh, somebody had a really good idea when I was in JFK Lancer, and they had mentioned that 
if you can't get it put in because of the significance of the assassination, That's get it absurd, put in yeah. as part of the FDR public works programs that he had going because all of those are being preserved. And I'm like, that's actually a really good idea. Well, let me tell you something. Ruth Payne's house in Oak Cliff is a national registered historic place, but Dealey Plaza is not. Think about that, folks. Think about the muscle behind Ruth Payne getting that re uh, acknowledged as a historic place, but you can't get Dealey Plaza acknowledged as a historic place. How crazy is that? That's typical, typical. Um, Paul Pittsgerald, um, I didn't say the rule ahead of time, but he said, what about Rob Reiner? He said on CNN he had it all figured out. The shooters, the top-level brass involved. Also, what about SS Agent O'Donnell, who had some, who some have speculated accidentally was responsible? Okay, so there's how much is this guy paying for this? Because there's oh, five this is questions a free one too. I'm picking. No, no, one. this is so five questions by this guy, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, her illegitimate son Paul Fitzgerald, who is half black and uh, half <laughs> half black and half Japanese. Every December seventh, he attacks Pearl Bailey. But go back to that question so I can just pick it apart for one second. Because, all right. So okay. Rob Reiner has it all figured Rob out. Rob Reiner's a fat fuck. Okay, so he was on CNN. Big deal. <laughs> Figured out the shooters. Who cares? The top level brass involved, as we all acknowledge. Uh, what about uh, Secret Service agent uh, O'Donnell? There is no Secret Service agent O'Donnell. He's conflating Kenny O'Donnell, the aide to the president, with a Secret Service agent, whom I don't know. Uh, and he's now conflating the Secret Service agent who, <laughs> I hate to even get into this, who uh, uh, mortal era yeah. uh, says stood up in the in the uh, the driver uh, or the, the, the 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 stood up and blew Kennedy's head off with an AR-15. So we've got 15 different pieces of misinformation. You win, Paul uh, Fitzgerald. Tell him what he's won, Bob. You've won a trip to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and a Shefflet Lewis vacuum cleaner. Uh, but I hope I answered some of this. Um, absolutely, absolutely. And I've got other super chats in here I'll mix in. Uh, General Sal Kitty, love you guys. Super entertaining. Thank you. And we've got Mike Bishop as a new member, as well as General Sal Kitty. I guess I'm saying it right. I think it's Sal. I, I don't know. Let me keep the same thing. Hey, Greens from Australia. Yeah, we actually had somebody from yeah. Australia. No, no, we had a few. Not, he wasn't alone, that guy. I think he had some friends with him. I don't know that I don't think they were from Australia though. I think he was. Oh, oh, that, oh that I don't know. Okay, but, but he wasn't well, there was himself, Scotland was there, but Scotland I think was presenting um but people from all over. It was Crazy, really, yeah. really amazing. Yeah. A total party. Um, except for having the party where we dare speak <laughs> too loud in the corner on the other side. It's well, I mean, there's some I, you know how many things I've been kicked out of in my life? I just had flashbacks of being kicked out of things for being too loud at our own. It's like being kicked out too loud at your own birthday party. You know? <laughs> well, we, we, I, I mean, I just kept saying, us? What? What are you talking about? It just made no sense. <laughs> I got yelled at, right? And I left on my own accord earlier. Dude, I was kicked out. I was ejected. From, exactly. I was ejected from the game. I had to go into the penalty box. <laughs> it's a crazy. Hey, thank you, go. Um, Gary I Walker blame Show. Al Gonzalez, by the way, a New York City detective uh, who caused the entire problem, and that FBI agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a, both a Fed. I had a Fed. A, 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 yeah. a, a, You're talking about a, infiltration. I had a, a New York City intel detective on one side. FBI agent on another, and then a Coast Guard uh, guy on the right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had me surrounded. I know. Well, at least you're protected. Everyone was wearing them. a wire. I mean, I'm sure they're all... <laughs> well, and the two of them were armed. <laughs> there, it was two, two out of three were armed. The other guy was on mushrooms, so I don't know what was going on with him. I don't know. And, and then you had and then the, we had the FedEx pilot who was uh, uh, driving us around like uh, we, we were dignitaries from the, the United Nations. Oh, dude, not only that, uh, helping capture the, that dude is just a rock star. Amazing, amazing guy. Um, the new Roger Stone book is fire. Apparently, Nixon knew LBJ was in on it. Listen, you, you can't take any of these Roger Stone books for for, for uh, verbatim. Just, just, I mean, I know you love Roger Stone and everything else. He's not a researcher. He's got people doing this who are minor league characters doing uh, uh, Reader's Digest condensed books of American history. I love Roger Stone, but please, there are other 
researchers you may want to take a look at. All he does is have a kid pull out some bullet points out of other people's book. Phil Nelson. Books. What's that? Like Phil Nelson. And Robert Caro and slap them together into a book at an appropriate time. Does he need the money? Yes. Should you buy the book? Yes. Is he a, a worthy character to um, do a GoFundMe or what gives? Yes, absolutely. The guy's been through living hell. But as for our uh, genre, uh, I, Roger Stone is not really in the mention. He, he, I mean, it's, he's a step above Bill O'Reilly. I don't mean that politically. I just mean that literally. All right. And uh, speaking of Al Gonzalez, here he is. You smashed the last year conference like Sherman through the South. <laughs> Best part was Mark treating us to a night of stories and shtick luck at the hotel bar, a night of memories. Did I say that right? Yeah. No, no. He. We also got kicked out of the hotel bar. So <laughs> we got <laughs> we got kicked out of the room, the, the conference room. We got kicked out of the hallway because we went to the men's room to do this story uh, telling. Then we went to the bar downstairs and another, you know, 12 stories down and got kicked out of the bar because they were eventually closing. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? Why kick, get kicked out of only one thing? Three things. If you can't, you know, yeah, exactly. And I don't mean for drunk and disorderly. Look, I've been kicked out for, you know, being drunk and disorderly. You know, no doubt about it. But <laughs> this was not the case. We were just lively having conversations. I mean... There was no harm, no foul, no fights. You know, there was no women involved. There were no drugs involved. And yet, still, in 2023, you get removed from various uh, edifices. They're just on to you, buddy. They're on to you. <laughs> All right, Pasha Moyer, question. The show must go on. I suspect many of us would not have begrudged you a Tuesday off, but, man, I'm man, glad you didn't take it. I am Thanks fried. Yeah, me. thank you. Thank you, Pasha. I mean, you, you deserve a Tuesday off, too. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Uh, court clerk with a U. Uh, was a privilege meeting you all at Lancer, Mark. I've heard you mention a Ren Remington XP100 regarding the fence. Shooter. Yeah, that's what right. What makes you think it was that weapon in particular which was fired? Well, I think it was leaked in the James Files uh, limited hangout. In other words, there's, there's elements of James Files' story that are true. Uh, which are provided in any of these phony stories. You could look at Judith Barry Baker. There's elements that are true in her story. There's elements that are true in every fraudulent story. And I kind of started getting into that gun about 10, 15 years ago and looking at that gun and and the how it's fired, uh, the bullet that comes out of it. And I started to ask experts about that gun and began to believe that Possibly that was the gun that was at the fence. It's small. It's in a little case. Uh, it's not noticeable. Um, there's other things that I thought about about that gun, uh, the Remington, uh, which I'd love to get one uh, one of these days, and I will. That I think the files um, uh, storyline accurately uh, uh, uses, and there are elements. And just so a general a general statement here. With the bullshit stories, with the phony stories, there's truth in the stories on purpose to hook you. They're not bullshit stories. When you look at Judith Vary Baker's overall stories, there's many facts in there. There has, has to be. Otherwise, the bullshit doesn't fly. It's the same with James Files. There's truth in James Files. He's a lying, convicted felon, however, who has been caught contradicting himself and lying by JFK researchers enough to discredit him. It doesn't mean they don't sprinkle these stories with facts and tidbits that you and I have to suss out. And that's what people uh, do who are JFK researchers. You have to go through the bullshit to get the little nuggets of gold that are in there. Because when they're building a character, a phony character, as part of the assassination, they are forced, and I'm sure they're not happy about it, forced to sprinkle in true gold to hook you. In other words, look at Robinol with What's-His-Face, the uh, uh, Secret Service agent who's got the new book out. There are little tidbits in there of fact that have never been revealed before. To, it, it's designed to create veracity for him as a Secret Service agent, but it also helps us with the puzzle. And I, this is just, you know, my gut instinct is that that Remington was involved at the fence line. So half of your job is filtering. 
Yeah, no, not half of it, a lot of it is filtering. Even when I go through the books, you know, the memoirs and the books and everything else, you know, like I've said before, how the system that I use is I will find at least a minimum of two memoirs that um, will say the same thing about a particular subject or a person uh, that are independent memoirs. You know, particularly a great example would be, uh, uh, you know, Goodwin, uh, Richard Goodwin and Bill Moyers uh, saying the same things in their memoirs about LBJ. In other words, but I do that across the board. I just don't take one book and go, hey, here's a factoid. I'm going to run with this. That's that's a, that's insane. That's insane. I have to I have to have a, some other source for that particular factoid to fit into my general view of the assassination. This is where I think AI would be super useful. If all these books can be fed in. Train your own AI, not the not the garbage that's out there is getting filtered and censored as much, but train your own like with a full catalog of every word of every book that's ever written and be like. How many times is such and such mentioned? And it just say do, 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 you know, a whole list of them, and then you can like compare and contrast um, what they're all saying. And then when you're looking, I'm guessing you're looking for consistencies. Like six books say the same basic thing, and it doesn't feel like made up or colorful language, that sort of thing. Well, I'll give you an example. In other words, when people say, you know, Oswald said this when he was under arrest, and I go, "What's the source?" And they go, "Oswald." <laughs> it's not the source. It's, it's somebody saying he said that. Mm -hmm. And then it gets conflated to the captain, Will Fritz, who says, Oswald said this. Okay, why don't you write it down? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, why would I write it down? Well, why don't you tape record it? You had a tape recorder. Ha <laughs> ha. Why would I do that? It's easier for me to say he said it. And look how effective it is. Oh, look yeah. how effective it is more than a tape of, of Oswald's interrogation. He said this. Really? Who said that? I did. Okay, well, that's not Oswald. But historically, it gets conflated that Oswald said this. The only thing you see him saying is, I, I, I am a patsy that you can mm -hmm. count on. But, and, and a few other statements, obviously. Well, that but, were actually on camera that you watched him say with his Right, mind. but, but they had tape recorded, they had tape recorded uh, interrogations in the Dallas Police Headquarters before. You would think the biggest case in the history of the planet Earth, they might warn getting some extra batteries and plugging in a tape recorder. How about taking a pen with a pencil? Okay, is that so difficult? They probably did is the answer to the question, but uh, they never saw the light of day. Oh, sure. I, I right. believe it. This isn't a question, but I just thought it was funny. Um, Rob Reiner was at the Grassy Knoll, but all he shot was a plate of cheeseburgers down his fat pie hole. Is that a poem? Apparently. It's a poem. <laughs> or a haiku. Or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wow, that's brilliant, man. <laughs> I, guess I appreciate it. David Parsons is setting the record straight. Pecans are the... I'm uh, not a real Texan. For the love of God, I'm a Jewish guy from Brooklyn. <laughs> Would you stop bothering me with this pecan? <laughs> South, South Brooklyn, though. South Brooklyn. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You should watch, if anybody's interested, you, should, you might want to watch, uh, besides the uh, JFK uh, Lancer Conference, uh, the the Allen, city of Allen, Texas library thing. Well, when I it did. comes out, it, it's not available. It, it they right. took down that live feed, so right. I'm watching for it to come out, and I'm going to be putting it up on locals. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't really have a chance to see what happened to that, but that was a lot of fun. I mean, I did about a two-hour thing uh, presentation there, and it covers a lot of uh, uh, various parts of my life. It was kind of like how I got – they wanted to know how I got to JFK. Uh, in, in investigation. So I went back in time quite a bit and then eventually uh, did what Eric and I did uh, at the Lancer. I showed, played a little bit of piece of Eric's thing, um, the audio of the AI, and then showed, you know, the script to follow along. I had a huge screen, incredible tech personnel there. So I took advantage of it and it worked really smoothly, uh, which you'll see eventually whenever they put this thing up. But yeah. it was, a, it was a great night. Um, and 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 it was a I didn't know it was over an hour away from Dallas. I mean, we were driving through the woods at one point. I thought the Klan <laughs> was going to come out and get us. I mean, it, it, it was out there wherever the city of Allen is. But um, and of course, the lead in was flamingos. What's that? The lead in was flamingo dancers. I kid you not. Uh, on the stream, I'm sitting here waiting. Oh, for yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I like, think that that's obviously from another event months ago. Uh, no, I know, I know, but it's just as right. funny. It's like the flamingos. Yeah, I was wondering what that was. That was kind of weird. That was not the, the opening act. By the way, there was no opening act. By the way, when um, 
I get a hold of it or whatever. Um, our friend who was driving us around actually helped record. There's about a half hour, I think, that is not going to be available on YouTube that we did capture and we'll be putting. Oh, on, great. On yeah, there's a huge well, Q&A. So. There's a long Q&A at the end, um, which is fascinating. I mean, those people in that audience knew this uh, as best audience I've ever seen in my life knows a particular subject because they were there and they go to this event at the city of Allen. Which it's a library. <laughs> it's a good place. No, no, no. Mind. But I'm saying the library is closed. I mean, they have a theater attached to the library. It's a beautiful modern theater. Robert Groden had been there a couple of weeks before. I talked. I, I told Groden I had seen his performance there, which was very interesting. I urge people to watch the Robert Groden uh, Zabruda film uh, uh, episode at the City of Allen, which you can, which is online now. You can actually see that one. Yeah, and I don't know how long it's going to take them to, you know, c cut it out because it, it's like that stream runs twenty four hours a day. Yeah, or yeah, it's, it's like continuous. A close set, close circuit TV over there. That is okay, Thomas uh, Kefauver. Bring your rifle to work day. I, yeah, I mean, I, I again, I think it. Uh, they, they show their. It's Texas. What do I know? What do I? <laughs> I mean, I guess they show off their rifles. They got a brand new rifle. You bring it to work. You show your friends your fishing rod, your rifle, uh, whatever. You know, and and it was you know I think it was a guy named Castor, Warren Castor or somebody who had a bunch of rifles there. <laughs> All right, um, let me see. TB, why do you think JFK went against the status quo? Status quo meaning powers that be: CIA, military industrial complex, big oil, Federal Reserve, death wish, or huge ego. No, I, I mean he. Uh, to answer even the short answer is he had been in the military in World War II and had uh, been a PT. Uh, a boat skipper, and he had seen the arrogance and the incompetence of generals and admirals and top brass. As a military guy, he wrote uh, that he had seen them uh, make huge mistakes, and he didn't have the luxury of making a huge mistake, other than the fact you know the Japanese uh, ship rammed his his thing, and they 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 had a fight to survive, and he had to rescue every single one of his men. Uh, but it was a combination of, of that, going to Vietnam uh, as a senator and uh, seeing the um, incompetence of the French colonialists dealing with the military in Vietnam before we got there was part of it. Um, the oil depletion allowance he felt was uh, unfair. Um, I don't think it was a death wish at all. Uh, but there, there's political reasons for each of those uh, uh, parts of the question. Yeah, for sure. Um, Pamela Clifton, hi, you guys. Hope you both have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, and I hope all of you do, too, as well. Charles Seaver, thank you very much. Is that National Indigenous Day or something? What do they call it on the left? Is it? It's I got know. another name now. Right? Oh, that's Columbus Day. I'm sorry. Thanksgiving oh, yeah, yeah, Day, Day. Is, yeah. it's typically known as Killing Indian Day. But the point <laughs> of the matter is they have another name, which I don't remember right now. Oh, whatever. It, it, obviously, nobody's remembering. It's, it's really catching on there. Uh, Guy Merritt, question. What are the chances the remaining records have not been fabricated, edited, otherwise jerked with? Would they even be meaningful? I don't think they keep them locked up for this long. You know what I mean? Like, what's the point? Okay. I mean, the, the reason they're fighting not to release them, they could have they could have destroyed them a long time ago. Why even have anything there? All right, uh, question. Have you verified Oswald's phone call that that Grover character unearthed? Uh, Grover Proctor, which also I recommend you watch on City of Allen uh, television. Uh, they have an episode with uh, Grover Proctor going uh, into immense detail about the phone call. Uh, yeah, it's quite real. John Hurt, military intelligence, retired out of Raleigh. I think it was a little bit outside of Raleigh, but the 919 uh, that whole area is ONI territory, going all the way out to Nags Head uh, to the east, Raleigh, obviously, to the west of uh, North Carolina. And the people who uh, uh, frequent or live in that area from that period of time were mostly ONI because of the naval bases that are there, Eric. And uh, that's been that that call's pretty well been confirmed. Uh, as being John Hurt's number and John Hurt being military intelligence. So the idea that you have been accused of shooting the president and you call a random guy named John Hurt, whose military intelligence is obviously his handler, 
uh, and maybe not obviously, but theoretically his handler out of, out of North Carolina, uh, there's got to be a connection. I mean, uh, you know, he didn't call his mother, put it, let me put it that way. He didn't call his brother, John Pick, his, his half-brother, was Coast Guard. He didn't call his brother, Robert, uh, an ex-Marine who was in Fort Worth. There's a lot of people he could have called. He did call Ruth Payne twice to get the head of the ACLU to be his attorney. Ruth Payne just giggled and hung up, hung up the phone, you know, and literally said the audacity of this man uh, to call me to ask me to get him an attorney. And I'm going like, like, why wouldn't somebody call you to get an attorney if they were innocent or guilty? You know what I mean? Like she's a Quaker. She's this righteous liberal lefty. Uh, he's calling to get this her to call this guy um, in New York, uh, John Apt, ABT, who was the president of the American Civil Liberties Union. John Apt uh, was famous for defending people on the left and the right as an attorney. And uh, Oswald was calling him through her. Like through, a Dershowitz type? Yeah, I mean, he would be considered a Dershowitz type, absolutely. In fact, that famous at that time. That's how famous John Apt was. Get off the track for a second. Uh, John Apt was that big. And um, Apt was finally reached uh, and took a, 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 a vacation to upstate New York to avoid the case like the, the typhoid. That's how courageous John Apt was. He, you know, he was the anti-counselor. So uh, she got two calls from Oswald and uh, hung up and, and never called John Apt and, and later said it was outrageous that he would even ask her to do this. And we're like, really, lady? I mean, how outrageous of, of all the outrageous things in the world, why is this so outrageous? Yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, question from Bill D. Can you do an episode on the magic bullet that ricocheted off Jumbo? Welcome back, guys. Let me tell you something. If Jumbo had taken, if, if LAJ had taken Jumbo out, it could have blocked the uh, bullet from uh, the Dow Tex building that hit Kennedy in the in the upper right uh, quadrant of his shoulder. It would truly be a magic bullet. Mm -hmm. um, Wally Tango Foxtrot question. Which historical JFK conspiracy character scares you guys the most? Great channel, gents. Um, probably for it, it's a, it, not really. It's a, it's a tie for me between Demore and Schultz and Clay Shaw. Hmm. Uh, both of them deep state, both of them CIA, both of them operating above ground. Um, one in the gay world, one in the straight world, one in the oil world, one in the trade world. Uh, uh both international in scope. Both have a lot more knowledge. Obviously, Demore and Schultz, uh, very tight with George Bush, uh, senior. Uh, wrote him a letter, got answered the letter. Um, you know, Clay Shaw. I mean, the reason they scare me the most is they're so legitimate, they're so well connected, they're so indoctrinated into above ground society uh, that they are the scariest of the uh, of the group to to me. I mean, keep in mind, uh, Oswald speaks at Spring Hill College, and a week later, Clay Shaw speaks at Spring Hill College in in the summer of 1963. Uh, Clay Shaw has incredible amount of gravitas in the as pointed out in the movie jfk um that he is is the trump of new orleans i mean he is that well revered has that much influence built a trademark the international trademark in new orleans and um is involved in a lot of business as is de morinchil de morinchil goes to haiti uh during the overthrow of one of the leaders of haiti takes the new guy under his wing tries to contact LBJ through through Burris, LBJ's military attache, uh, tries to hook up the new leader of Haiti to start paying off LBJ while he's vice president. And um, uh, anyway, those two guys know too much and operate too broadly and are the scariest to me. Fair enough. Uh, Rumble rants do a couple of these. Uh, no sniper in the nest. Erica Mark, which presentation at Lancer did you enjoy most? Did you learn anything new that you had not really heard before? I can answer. Well, who, what, <laughs> what, what happened? What? I didn't watch a single one. So no, I no, no. I, I, I'm going to look at them now. That's why we yeah. downloaded it. Yeah. We didn't have time to I sit there and look at them. We were busy doing our own thing, but uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't looked at them yet to be to answer the question. 
it also week might have been a distraction because a lot of people wanted to talk. Yeah, to it was too much. It, it was too been, much. You know, yeah, I tried to walk into the room, but it got too crazy, so I left. Uh, we'll watch it privately. Um, I'm not your buddy guy. Not entirely unrelated, but did Jerry Kramer and Newman ever figure out if Keith Hernandez <laughs> did it, or was there a second spitter? I think it was um, uh, McDowell, the relief pitcher, was involved in it out of the bullpen. If I, I, I if I remember the details correctly, somebody hocked a loogie. Somebody got hit by the loogie because uh, the head went back and to the left from the loogie. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. That's people know. That, people know what I'm talking about. Inside base. No, no. Pe people know <laughs> what I'm, I just said. <laughs> yeah. People who know this. I think it's a, a double, a twin episode too. Wow. Okay. Uh, no sniper in the nest. In your conversations with Robert Roden, did you discuss how many shots were fired? Bob was saying he thinks as many as 11. I believe Marcus said he thought more like six or seven. Any thoughts? Let, on let me ask you. Let me ask you. What difference does it make? What difference does it make? How many shots are fired? I mean, seriously. I mean, come on. I mean, Kellerman says it was raining bullets down on. There's an obsession with who pulled the trigger on these various shooters, Mel Torme, Jim Johnson, a sniper from your regiment that was in Germany in 1959. None of that's ever going to come out. Uh, as for the physical number of bullets of which hit first, a lot of this is meaningless, really. And I don't say that to be disparage, uh, disparagingly to the question, but I say it to myself too, because I obsessed about it for years. And then it finally dawned on me how meaningless this was. You know, how many shots, where they hit, who hit first, this and that. The question is why and how and when uh, uh, this happened, who covered it up, who could have had the power to cover it up, why was this being done in Dallas as opposed to Chicago where they almost pulled it off, Tampa where they almost pulled it off, uh, Miami where they almost pulled it off. Uh, it would have been the next town if it wasn't Dallas. You know, a lot of this stuff – uh, is not really relevant to the bigger picture. I know it sounds like something that is of interest, but that's what they want you to focus on, people. They want you to focus on the freaking minutia. Get above the minutia. Begin to look at this from above, from, from an intellectual drone flying overhead and begin to think out of the box as to why this was happening, who benefited, what what road the United States went down after it happened, LBJ taking power, launching the Vietnam War, killing 58,000 Americans is far more important than how many bullets were fired in Dealey Plaza that day. Also, in fairness, I don't think you said firmly. I think you were saying, well, Monte, you know, it was kind of like you're throwing out a number. I don't think you said you're hard on. Oh, no, I, no. Seven, you're like, no, oh, no, no. Like, I was, I was just whatever. throwing out a number. By the yeah. way, every crime show that's on TV that's in serialization and reruns now, from uh, Monk to CSI, they're all running their old assassination episodes this week. We were watching TV in the hotel, and one after another, including Monk, including Tony Shalhoub. That's a good show, by the way. It's a great that. show. It's a great show. Tony Shalhoub, they ran their assassination episode. And I don't mean uh, of, of JFK, but mm -hmm. they have assassination some of it. some yeah. politician on a rooftop, blah, blah, blah. You'll be surprised all week how many of these uh, procedural crime dramas have JFK episode, JFK-like assassination episodes. It was one after another. We just kept flipping. You know, law and order, a politician comes to New York and they, he's about to be assassinated. I go, holy crap, how many are there? This is over a period of 25 years that these episodes are now in, uh, you know, reruns. Uh, but holy cow, it seems like all of them have one. Well, what is it in the seventies that was a big one? Uh, it, it, there are certain themes that they would do, though. Every every show out there, like all the sitcoms, I want to say like lemon ring pie or something. Like they would close the oven and the pie would fall. It, it was like every comedy had that. I, I can't remember which pie it was. Well, um, I mean, there, there was there was the uh, I Love Lucy episode where they're working in a pie factory, her and Ethel, and the pies get backed up, and it's you know it's like a. A, a, Ford, a Ford Motor Company of pies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, question, does anyone know what became of Aquila Clemens? 
Well, if it was the Biden administration, she'd end up on dialysis, having diabetes and being forced to take Otempa or some sort of. I look, she was, you know, morbidly over overweight. She wasn't healthy at the time. I assume she died of diabetes. OK, um, African-American but, woman interviewed by Mark Lane, uh, by the way, not to make light of it. OK, um, Buffalo Rick question. What the doctor said. Excellent. Agree. Well, I haven't watched it because I don't need to, because I actually remember what the doctor said then. So I, unless they made more doctors, uh, 28 of them said the back of the head got blown off and there was a hole the size of a grapefruit. If they've added more doctors to that, I, I don't know how many more doctors you can add other than 28 in Parkland who said the same exact thing. There's a famous poster of all 28 of them in, in photos with their hand in back of their heads. <laughs> Uh, showing where the head was blown out from the back. Uh, so I don't know what, I, I'll take a look at it when the dust settles, but I don't know what they can add uh, to that that I don't already know. All right, um, Guy Merritt uh, saying that she became a jazz singer and died of a heroin overdose. Oh, come on, that's insane. I find that hard to believe, Merritt. <laughs> I don't know. He's talking about the Billie Holiday story. He's conflating the two. Probably. Uh, let me see, uh, Gregory DeFeo. Mark, the Clean Slate Act just signed into law by New York oh, Governor Hockle. Yeah. We could talk about include... this on Friday. We're talking about this on Friday. I don't want, it's not quite relevant, but I'll, I have some opinions on that. Uh, Ron DeFeo's younger brother. Uh, Winston Smith, do you know that LBJ was NYA, an arm of the WPA, and had a hand in the planning of Dealey Plaza? There's a pre assassination plaque with LBJ's name on the lightly traveled side of the plaza. Uh, well, I know he was working with N NYA, and that's what his connection was to FDR under the WPA. There's a lot There's of so many. There's yeah, so I know, no, but I happen to know this. I didn't know about the that his name was on the um, on the plaque on the other. I wish side. somebody took a picture of that. And said, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that's that. Good but that know. makes sense because everything was WPA there. Um, but that's his that's his uh, inroad into FDR uh, is that program. Oh, yeah. Um, court clerk, dude, uh, thank you for the thoroughness. Y'all rock. Hey, is this the tall guy that who the super tall kid? That might be. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a super tall kid. Could could be. I'm yeah. Not sure. Who gave me that insane book by Nellie Connolly with all the stuff in it. Thank you if it is. All right. And you can read this one. I can read this one. Let's get the guy from Argentina, the new president. He can read it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I put it up. I don't know how to read it. So. If anybody knows what that means, thank um, you. <laughs> please translate for us uh, for four ninety nine. This is the secret quiz question of the day is that. Yeah. Um, Wait, Jane maybe this Will. is the same one. Maybe it's the same question. No, I don't know. Uh, Man Mountain Marco, what's your take on David Sanchez Morales? Let, let me take an hour and get into each other. Let, let me spend an hour on <laughs> each fucking one. So, so, hey, so Will, what's the deal, episode. bro? What's my take on all of these 19 people? I'll give you five <laughs> seconds each. Morales, top assassin for the CIA in Central and South America. Uh, William Harvey, an alcoholic who dug the tunnels underneath the Berlin Wall, put in the wiretaps that we overheard the... Uh, East German police, uh, later involved in uh, the Bay of Pigs and the debacle down there. Uh, Angleton became an alcoholic, went out of his mind, and he loved flowers. Uh, David Atlee Phillips is the only real serious one of the group as uh, uh, West Western Hemisphere Station Chief out of Mexico City, involved in the planning and framing of the situation in Mexico City with Oswald. He's really the only one with legitimate fingerprints on the assassination as Phillips Phillips train, helped train the men, oversaw the training of the men in the Bay of Pigs who were slaughtered there, uh, had a, a hard on for Kennedy because of the lack of air support in the Bay of Pigs. And uh, his brother, uh, James Phillips, of course, wrote Thunder Road, uh, the movie uh, with Robert Mitchum, and just, so, just to give you a little trivia. Oh, and he was kicked out of three schools uh, for alcohol abuse. So all of that, there's a lot of alcoholism right there in that group. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> David Parsons, Remington XP100 221 Fireball is loud as hell. Uh, no doubt about it, but it can have a silencer put onto it. There can be a suppressor onto that device, uh, built by Warbell. 
Touche, my friend. Mitch Werbel. Aaron M. On November 22nd, 1963, a young man named James Parrott was visited by Dallas police and the FBI. The Parrott memo was released in 1993, post-JFK film. Google image Parrott memo. Very interesting. I forget what this was. I, I have looked at it. I can't remember it right now. All right, so everybody definitely Google image that. Um, Tim Miles has been a member for the month. I love this site. It is so eye-opening. Thanks, lads. Okay. You, ever, you know, you know your site's doing well when you get trolls that says this is a piece of shit site. You know, out of the blue, these cats are coming out like, this is unwatchable. And I'm going, like, okay, who's making you watch it, bro? What's the deal? Here? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, let's get that Remington. Yes, I want to get a Remington. Thank you. Here Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 20 Australian to kick off the Remington Rifle Fund. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, did JFK give Jackie S any STDs during their marriage? Is that, a, is that some sort of a joke or what? I don't know. I, I think it's saying that uh, JFK slept around, so he must have had something. Did he? I, have, I don't know. Him? That's a good question. I mean, I don't really know if that's a joke or a real question, but um, uh, LBJ, you can ask him the question. Um, I, I don't even want to use the quote that he said about um, that. Uh, he, he got a lot more of this particular cat. No, he got a lot more uh, of victories in this field than JFK could get in his whole entire lifetime. Right. Like a cat. It's, it's another word for cat. He got a lot more of it than, than JFK ever did. Uh, okay, whatever that is. But he, he was 10 times worse than JFK with, with yeah. absolutely no press um, because look what he looked like. Those are the guys mm. that get more because <laughs> they need it more. They work so, harder. They work harder at it. <laughs> Um, Look at the ladies of LBJ if you if you want to uh, question that. For sure, that's our top video too. Well, we're seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of girls that have been mentioned. I mean, the German spy who was linked to to him, and and then you know uh, what's his name's uh, uh, wife from the CIA. There's a couple of women who've been linked to uh, to to JFK. A handful, but when you look at LBJ, it's literally hundreds. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, there's true. hundreds of Madeline Browns. Let me put it. Let me just sum it up. There's hundreds of Madeline Browns. All right. Uh, no sniper in the nest. Um, also said, I loved your presentation at Lancer. The best presentation of the show. Wow. Always entertaining, informative. Love Mark's Oswald Planet of the Apes shirt. That was a great. That was a great find on eBay. I had to outbid some guy who was in prison at the time. So I thought, uh, I don't know why he was in prison, but he was bidding against me for the Oswald shirt. Not enough money in the commissary, so you can right, you, right. You, you needed more money. On, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I have and, been, I crushed him. And then uh, Walfer Allen, who unfortunately couldn't make it, sadly, um, sent in a rumble rant. Uh, Groden's brief presentation on bullet points from Lancer is worth watching. Great yeah. job, thank you. Yeah, he did a, a longer version of that, I think, at uh, City of Allen. So, uh, I wish Allen was with us because then we could have had. Uh, you know, a true no, state. Uh, no, no, a state trooper. We would have had another division mm -hmm. uh, besides the city, New York City intelligence, and Gonzalez, and and uh, uh, the FBI agent. We kind of was our home. Fed New York too. Who okay. was our Fed New York as well? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Oh, good God. <laughs> okay, uh, Booker Dog. Great meeting you both in Dallas. Eric has pretty gray eyes, and Mark is Whoa. uber charming. Whoa. Ooh, yeah, I wish I could have charmed the Uber driver last night to drive a little faster. He decided <laughs> to take the 10, which is barely open, but we did make it home. And thank you, Booker Doc. Um, oh, Michelle. Okay, thanks. Uh, YouTube, sir, or stir. How can I send a pic? Hey, guys, I attended the dedication of Dealey Plaza as a national monument in 1993. The speaker is Nellie Connolly. I have pictures. You can um, go to ericconnolly.com slash contact, reach out to me there. I'll reply and you could, you know, send a pic, pic or, or whatever. Um, Tom Woolley. Enjoy talking to Eric and Mark at the Dallas conference. Looking forward to the next meetup. I think Tom made the lanyards. The oh, the yes. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Wonderful. And Absolutely he has wonderful. a and I, I he has a brother who has as many stories as you do, I think. Oh, that's the Olympian Wooly. That's his <laughs> brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And know some of the same people. Yeah, seems to be, be a lot of overlaps. Uh Thomas Kefaber. 
Mr. Horn, once well respected, what's his <laughs> status? Well, when you start interviewing CIA agents uh, uh, and saying that that's the truth, you got a problem. I mean, he did it to himself. I don't know if he needed the money for a book, but when you, you know, if I interviewed a guy from the CIA and just said, this guy's telling the truth, no matter what he says um, to the contrary, I'd look like a schmuck. You know, people would say, how could Mark be doing this? And yet Doug Horn uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Brunoni or Dean Brunoni or Dana Brunoni. Oh, yeah. The uh, oh, you're talking about the film. It's the yeah. Same. Yeah. God, that's the latest one. It's like they come in waves. Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah, JDB, yeah. JDB, JDB, and then yeah. files, 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 files. Yeah. Kagallan, Kagallan, Kagallan. Well, they like to have a guy. I mean, let me tell you something. Horn legitimizes the other guy. So Horn did a disservice to all of us by interviewing this mutt um, from from whatever optics department he was, whatever crap story he's got from the CIA. The guy was a CIA operative agent employee for 40 freaking years. He's trained to bullshit you. When you sit down and interview him, he's a professional bullshit artist. That's the job. And all of a sudden they go, well, how can you discredit him? He was interviewed by Doug Horn. You know, it's just, all right, well, there it is. There it is. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Tesla one looking at the Partland description of wounds. How likely is it that the fatal shot came from the picket fence? It looks to be the wrong angle to hit the left temple and blow out the left back of the skull. It hit the right. Side. Well, it depends on, you know, what moment his head was looking towards that fence. You know, you're, you're looking at a stationary thing in your mind's eye. Uh, but when, you could never really tell the millisecond it hits the head where the place of the head is. So in other words, going through the, the right temple, blowing out the backside of the head, what other planet could it have come from? Let me just ask you that. What I mean, it's a, a, right there. If you go to the place and look at it, you'll see that there's no other place on the earth that that shot could have come from at that level, that flat trajectory going through the right temple and exiting it kind of and i remember looking at this originally it kind of like catches the right temple um it catches the right temple and then goes out kind of like just barely gets the right temple and blows out uh the back of the head it's not coming across and blowing out this side if that's what you're thinking that's a wrong angle right um life of brian best refutations of posner and bugliosi revisiting parkland no well no the chaos book for P P oh Puglosi. that's good, Puglosi. yeah, yeah refutations i mean the, the, yeah. the chaos book by tom o'neill if you want to the destruction of bugliosi you'll never believe anything he ever says again and as for posner i mean look he's been dismantled there's a great article uh if you go to kennedy and king jim Eugenio's website there is an entire article dismantling case closed the book, which I recommend you want to read. Uh, there's another book, uh, Judith Very Baker, in her own words. Um, got a is, copy. Well, I got a copy. It, it, yeah, yeah. You could read that book. I mean, there, there are books and articles refuting uh, these frauds uh, all over the place. I'm not all over the place, but I mean, in places uh, that all of us have read. Spartacus Educational has a lot of that, right? I think it's no, no, most of it is on on bigger websites like Jim Eugenio's website, um, which I recommend Kennedy and King uh, go there and you'll find a lot or, of course, Mary Farrell uh, Foundation. Uh, a lot of the website, uh, that foundation website is the best, uh, the Mary Farrell Foundation. All right. Um, J.S. Was Kennedy aware of the other attempts in Florida, Chicago or other areas? If so, why would have he not insist on car tops and more protections okay well in chicago in particular i mean the, the event was canceled in, in soldier field when they got to chicago so he had to know that as for the details of it i doubt it but he had to know why the event was canceled i mean pierre salinger came out with an excuse that he had a cold to cancel the event but that's the cover story so he knows that something's going on. He knows that something's going on in Tampa. And he knows something's going on in Miami. As to the the top of the car, which is a plastic bubble, it was used off and on everywhere. I mean, it it, it you know it had nothing to do with him order, ordering it off or on, as dedicated as indicated by Vince Palomara in eight hundred different videos where he shows 
the protection of Kennedy being immense in every other city except Dallas. I mean, Vince has hammered this over the years. He's got plenty of videos and photos to show you Kennedy in every other city in the world, uh, surrounded by motorcycles, and all of a sudden everything's stripped away in Dallas, as you, we, it's been demonstrated in our interview with Vince, if you want to look at that. And also on Vince's uh, uh, YouTube channel, you could see the stuff there. All right. Uh, Brad Wilson, love this channel. Can you link the RFK and JFK assassinations? In what, in three words? Yeah, two words, Jim Braden. The only guy who's at both assassination sites, interviewed by the police in both assassination sites, Jim Braden is arrested in Dallas, and he's interviewed by uh, detectives, intelligence squad, um, Manny Pena in particular, and uh, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, so, yeah, there's one man connected to both of them, and that's uh, uh, Jim Braden. All right. Um, Juan, Juan Amigo, question. Were there any consequences for Dallas PD for letting Ruby into the garage to shoot Oswald? No. As a matter of fact, uh, they had a circle finger pointing jerk yeah. thing of who did what. And uh, like they usually did, uh, he was let in. I forgot the guy's name offhand. Now I have his name somewhere. It, the door was open on the on the side, never went down the ramp. Uh, there was a side door that he was let into the basement. There was a, a, a signal that he received that uh, Ruby was on the move. That came from Ruby. Uh, Ruby's actual first attorney, uh, the guy we mentioned in the episode previously. I forget the guy's name offhand. We had the, the, the three friends. Uh, um, the guy was killed. Remember we did the episode? With yeah, the, I, can't, I forgot the name. I, I forgot the guy's name off the ham. Hey, sorry, but it's in that episode we did about the three friends of Ruby who were killed. The first one was his attorney, by the way. Um, he was, I think, with the, was he killed with the karate chop? Uh, he went to oh, Oswald, yeah. right? Yeah, he went no, to Oswald. No, the karate chop oh, no, that was that was that was the, the Long reporter. Beach reporter, or whatever. that was a reporter, yeah. Long Beach, no, in Long Beach was the gunshot, the other reporter was oh. the Dallas guy. And I, I get confused about my weird desk, <laughs> right? But his job was he went to the cell and looked at Oswald and said, He's in the cell. He then said they're releasing Oswald to the detective. And when he was released, the detective opened up the side door and let Ruby in. Uh, that's when they try to pin it on a rookie cop at the ramp uh, and say this rookie cop had looked the other way and Ruby went down the ramp. That never happened. Never happened. Uh, he came in a side door opened by a Dallas police detective. With, I, I have his name somewhere. I forget what it is who let him in, and that gave him access to uh, to murder uh, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald at the moment he was being moved in there. So he was hovering outside. Uh, Ruby he had gone across, obviously, to the uh, Western Union station. That was just a, a, a holding area. The Western Union thing was a holding area for him to get the signal to come in through that side door and uh, murder Lee Harvey Oswald. All right. Um, let me see here question can you add anything to the story of kids in the police department restroom who overheard cops talking about it i have no idea what that's about and i don't know what they're talking about there's some yeah i don't know who the kids are i don't know what police department i don't know what he's talking about all right uh true elswick i have a remington 223 bolt action with a three by nine <laughs> scope mark can have oh come Pick on up and check out mothman here in west virginia happy to get a rifle in your hand well when i'm in west virginia i'm going to check it out i mean uh, that thank you very much i don't think you need the scope i mean i do but i don't think you need the scope to make that shot from the fence i just want to be oh, clear about that that was measured somebody measured it while they were there the result guess mm -hmm. how far 61 yards 35.1 okay oh, half of that okay yeah i mean it's a, it's so close it's silly i mean it was close i was saying it was a 50 yard easy yeah. like, entry level and it's like they met they um brought a range finder measured at 35 mm -hmm. freaking yards ridiculous oh, okay that seems a little short but all, all right um question were the powers that be purposely inserting the information eugene b dinkins uncovered into the media or was it their own subconscious tattling on what was planning or planning? No, for that, that's not true. He intercepted French intelligence that had intercepted our intelligence. Uh, he, that was his job. He didn't get it from us. He got it from the French, uh, from what I understand. And um, the, the part of the reason they wanted to silence him 
is the even the French did not want us to know that they had uh, access to our intelligence. And we didn't want the French to know and blah, blah, blah. We didn't want Dinkins running around. But from why, what I understand was he wasn't in, designed to eavesdrop on our intelligence. He was designed uh, or signed his job was to do intelligence on the French. All right. So the, Fran the French intelligence had picked up this assassination thing and uh, um, were talking among themselves and, and Dinkin uh, picked that up. Cool. Uh, da, da, da. Dustin, we just saw Dustin Russell. Awesome. He was, with, he was with us that night. Uh, yeah, there we go. Awesome job at the conference. Best part was being kicked out three times. It's like the 90s all over again. But we weren't even drunk and disorderly. I mean, we, there was no cocaine. There were no women. I mean, it was it was quite peaceful. It's very I, disappointing. Very disappointing how little you have to do today to get 86. I mean, back in the day, I mean, you really had to have blood and weaponry and fighting and whatever. All the good stuff. All right. Um Michael uh, Michael DePaul, did you guys hear any info on the city of Dallas making changes to Dealey Plaza? Well, there's articles that have been written on it and plans that have been laid out. Um, there's a deep so, state architect from New York who's even involved who moved to Dallas just for the job of redesigning Dealey Plaza and has come up with actual architectural sketches. Mm -hmm. That's right. It, it looks to be possibly imminent. Uh, Pokey SD Clint Hill hawking his book again says only three shots and all came from the sixth floor. SBD saw everything and kept Jackie and the skull in the limo. Just forget about this guy, people. I mean, forget about this douchebag. I mean, uh, he's just a thoroughly discredited guy at this point, being trotted out. Sad, you know, it is sad because there was heroism. He was a heroic guy. Right, there yeah. was, and he has just become a puppet tool of the deep state. It's really sad. All right, um, Rusty Ward was in Dealey Plaza last week, was surprised how small the area is. Yeah. It gives a lot of perspective. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoy your stuff. By the way, on that note, it's very brief, but I did do a walkthrough with a 360 camera that I, I put a link on Locals, um, didn't talk. It was just literally just walk it so you can move your mouse cursor around everything else and look and really get a perspective on how big it actually is. It's not perfect, but you know, if you can't be there, it's not too bad from just, you know, a quick stroll. Um, Tesla, yes, left as in the shooter's point of view. Kennedy's right. So, okay. Yeah. I, I, just so we're clear. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's like coming like this, like almost right at him. It's such on the right side of the temple uh, that it could have missed. And, you know, they may have shot him from somewhere else or one of the other bullets could have killed him. I'm not sure what. But it almost grazes the right temple in a way because when they bring in the mortuary cosmetician, he plugs that hole in the right temple very easily uh, with whatever they use and some makeup. Uh, the back, of course, they had to reconstruct in Bethesda Naval Hospital when they had the autopsy that night, um, uh, later that same night. Uh, and, and that took some work and some photos and phony photos and everything else and, uh, you know, a brain that was intact and because everything else had drained out into a bucket below the table in Parkland, according to multiple nurses. The the brain itself and, and, and things in there were, were in a, a drop bucket below his head. And they, when they got to Bethesda, there was very little brain left. So, I mean, even if you wanted to trace that shot, see, there is no shot in the back of the head. So whatever, the, there's no tracing back there. Uh, the tracing of the shot, even from the front, I believe, would be difficult because it kind of skims along the skull and blows out the, the right side of the head, indicating how close it is to the right side of the head, if that makes any sense. Because the guy was right. It should have, if it came across, it should have blown out the left side of the head. It doesn't. It blows out the right side of the head, which can be a little confusing, but it literally is almost straight on in front of Kennedy. Yeah, uh, if it uh, went through his eye, it's like it went through his imagine eye. Imagine it went through his eye, head. right. Yeah, that's a good analogy right there. That's a good analogy. And the shot to the throat, of course, doesn't traverse uh, for reasons I believe are a suppressor velocity reduction reasons and we've had both sides of it i'm a sniper i agree i'm a sniper i disagree uh, on this site for two years but i'm sticking with it because we have two 
different direction meat shots that don't traverse the body. Uh, the, the right shoulder shot from behind, which I think is from the Dow Tex building, and the throat shot that I think comes from the overpass on the left-hand side, looking up at the overpass uh, into the throat. Neither one of them traversed because I think there were suppressors on those weapons. All right. Got a rumble rant from Seymour SR. The 360 video is wild. Thanks for posting it. You guys. Wow. Right. Let's take well, a look you. at it. Where was he from? Uh, it just says Seymour SR. Okay. Well, he follows me on Twitter. That's what I was wondering. I think he's from Minnesota. Okay. Cool. Uh, JS, how was the media controlled during this time? I know they did, but not sure how it was manifested. Well, uh, let me just tell you this. We, they would go around to the TV and uh, radio stations and they'd say, give us all your film and uh, audio. And they said, okay. I mean, that's how it was controlled. The, the, the regular people were just bodily shaken down. But the media, uh, uh, put it this way, the, the woman who wrote the article um, about uh, the the Ruby situation and also some, some different gun angles wrote an article for the Dallas Morning News and came in the next day and the, and the article had been edited without her knowledge. And she said, I didn't write this. And she said, yeah, I know that, it was, sorry, we had a visit by a Secret Service agent. We changed it at his direction. Physically, right there in the Dallas Morning News, changing the editorial uh, with a man with a gun overlooking an editor's desk. So, I mean, think about that, people. He was highly encouraged. Mm -hmm. uh, John G., what does Mark think about Dr. Josiah Thompson's research on the JFK assassination? Or the first book's way? great. The second book's just for money. Uh, he later became a private eye, um, but the first book's fine. Uh, it was, I think it was... Um, serialized in uh, Look Magazine at the time, um, and which was a big breakthrough. He's an OG. Obviously. He was at Kappa last year, I think we saw him when we were in the restaurant, right? I think so. Uh, but he, he had that new book that just came out, which is just a money-making book. It has nothing to do with the assassination. But uh, I think he became a private eye, lives up in San Francisco. I think he's a lefty, um, if that matters. Um, whatever. Redundant in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> lives in San Francisco. I mean, put it that way. Uh, Don Winding, question: Can you guys show that Oswald did not kill J.D. Tippett? Sure, time. Well, well, how, how about the phony Oswald wallet that Westerbrook throws down at the Tippett killing? Unfortunately, Oswald is arrested with his own wallet on him. That indicates a frame. Why would he have a wallet at a murder site and then have his own wallet in his pocket? I'll or a jacket? Or oh, jacket? I'll just leave it at that. Um, let me see. Rim to. T to key. Just so you know, we the reason we know about the wallet is it was filmed by local news, uh, WFAU on camera with Westerbrook showing the wallet to them. So that footage has disappeared also, I'm sure. All right, no sniper in the mess. Rumble Rant have been watching a ton of JFK stuff this month, trying to comprehend many details. Tomorrow we need to remember a country lost its leader and a family lost its brother, son, father, br brother, husband, son, father, brother. So sad. I agree. That's... I agree. Well, also tomorrow you could begin to follow uh, what Hunley has created with AI uh, on locals, which well, we haven't mentioned. Look at that. But... <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's so I funny. Mean, this is the last super chat actually of the show. Wow. So, wow. wow. Yeah. Um, what we are doing for the Oswald Project, the first part is mostly recorded. This is a work in progress, but. We are releasing it on locals. And by the way, we will be leaving here and heading to locals to take some tips there and talk to them. But rather than just selling this well, out, hold on, just, just say unstructured.locals.com because sometimes people don't oh, know what no, that is. No problem. About. No problem. Actually, okay. uh, not everybody. While we're knows. talking about this, we'll just put it down there and yeah, have a scroll. You. Go, go on. So people can say unstructured.locals.com. So tomorrow, we have most of part one done. It'll be done over the next few days. We are releasing the five-part Oswald series over the next probably year, uh, essentially, and it is free for all locals, paid supporters who are annual subscribers. It's the fairest way to do that. Everybody who's an annual subscriber now is going to have access. Everybody who becomes an annual subscriber will have access as it comes out at unstructured.locals.com. So 
you want now you can join for free you won't have access to the oswald but you can you know, there's a lot of other content you can watch it for free you can watch this for free you can watch us talk you just can't interact and you're not going to get the special content but well this is very this is, special content because what eric has done oh yeah is he's taken my five scripts uh the miniseries i wrote with oliver stone and put them through the ai machine whatever that is and the voices that come out are the actual voices ai of the historic characters and there are many many historic characters in the five scripts and part one we're going to go to atsugi japan part one you're going to get the military training in san diego of oswald uh, when you hear oswald's voice it's astoundingly accurate uh, you're going to shit your pants uh, even my voice is not my real voice, and it sounds like more like me. I mean, uh, I could use that voice to fake out my mother, thinking I was uh, still downstairs in the bedroom. But the reality of it is, it sounds astounding. You're going to get the beginnings of part one tomorrow, and more and more released as time goes on. Uh, and it's, there's a lot of cliffhangers. There's a lot of unfinished stuff because it's literally ten hours. Uh, the scripts that I wrote with Oliver Stone of the miniseries of Oswald. So you're you're not going to get everything figured out tomorrow. But we thought tomorrow would be a good day to start it off because of the 60th anniversary of the assassination. And this will be on locals, platforms of, of Viva and Barnes. Well, they're and... going to have links to it. It's on unstructured.locals.com. OK. And it's a simple question. Yeah, right, How do right, we right. access it tomorrow? If you are a paid well, member. And tell them again, Eric. Tell them again. Yeah. Of locals. It will be there. It'll be a pinned tweet. You're going to get an email, it, and you can watch it. You can repeat, watch it. And what's different about this is it is a work in progress. So we're going to keep improving and keep changing it. Like um, the first part has censored. The naughty words aren't there. They're going to be put in there. So it is going to be uncensored. All the content will be put in there. And we're going to roll out the scripts. By putting on Locals, you are helping support us doing something that nobody has done before. This is do you, a do you get a copy of the thing. script, at least? They do get a copy of the script. Wait a minute. You're saying that for the simple price of the membership, you get a yeah. copy of the script and you can read the naughty words? You can read them. Okay. I, so you can, you can insert them. Yeah, you'll be put, they'll be putting them back in anyway once we get yeah they're, they're all going to go back in we're, we're going to keep improving it as we, we go were, we're making a teaser for youtube um exactly we, we thought it was going to go here it's like no we're going to do it on locals we appreciate you supporting us so you can keep checking back it's going to keep growing then we'll release part two but part the, three, uh, the part other four. locals uh, members like on Viva, they would get a link also, and and they would link on on Viva's locals or um, no, they they can choose to join or not join. You know, it's it's to help um, encourage people to join our locals, and they'll get access to it. Last point on that too is I'd really recommend you doing it now because we're putting of course, this the whole website in. will collapse probably if we all do it tomorrow at twelve thirty. That's right. No, 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 no. I'm saying well, they need to do it now before the end of the month because oh, right, starting right, right. the first of next month, yeah. because we're putting in this major content, we really can't afford to do it. So right. the annual membership is going up from $50 to $70. No, big so deal. if you go it took, now, it took me three years to write these scripts for guys' sakes. Right. Yeah. And um, you're getting that as part of an annual membership for 50 or $70 if you're watching this after. But it's a, it's a ton of content, and I mean, this is yeah. I mean, there's more deal. details in there than I can ever explain in these episodes because it's just one thing leads to another, and it's all connected in the miniseries. So it, it'll be resolved by the end. You know, when you go through the ten hours, uh, by the end, you'll get the whole picture of what happened and who they were and uh, where we are now. And most importantly, all the naughty words. Well, not only that, I mean, it's it's literally Oswald cradle to grave. I mean, from being born to dying. Uh, so it's all the stuff in between, stuff that you have no idea and you never heard about Oswald. Uh, the, you know, obviously being debriefed in Rotterdam when he comes back from Minsk. I mean, there's so many little things in there that I haven't even remembered to discuss on these episodes, let alone, you know, uh, uh, put into any other format than the scripts because there's, there's so much stuff in there. I mean, the, the, you, I have the congressional hearings of General Walker in there. Uh, I mean, it, there's so much stuff about Walker in there to begin with. I mean, it's more than just Oswald. I mean, it, it's everything tangential to Oswald is in the miniseries. 
uh, to explain how all this stuff works. So, And highly encourage everybody, check it out. And on that note, head over to Locals now because we're going to be there hanging out, having the after party, answering some tips and questions over there on structure.locals.com. Mm -hmm.